Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. What's up, nerdy whores, slutty scientists, and freaky geeks? This is Billy Presida, and you're listening to the Man Whore Podcast. Hey, 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 everyone. How you doing? Welcome to the show. If you're new, welcome back. If you're not... I am your host, comedian Billy Persida. If you're uh, unfamiliar with the program, this is a show where on most weeks I talk to women I've hooked up with about sex, dating, sexuality, gender, love. However, this week's special guest is not one of my former flames. No, no, no. It is stand-up comedian John Ozale. And I can't wait to tell you more about him in a bit. But first, Brooklyn. If you're in the house, tonight, August 31st, I will be performing some stand-up comedy over at Two Boots Pizzeria in Park Slope. Yeah, you heard me right. Uh, it's a pizza shop. I'll take that gig. Because uh, behind U.S. American dollars, pizza is my second favorite form of currency. I'm happy to be paid in such. So uh, that is an 8 p.m. show. It's free to come. I've got some more shows coming, uh, coming up. Uh, upstate, Long Island and such, New Jersey. Uh, for more details on those, head on over to manwhorepod.com slash comedy. And while you're over on my website, get on that mailing list, people. There's a little form on the right-hand side. Just put in your name, email address, and zip code. Why zip code? Eh, so I know where the cluster of whores are, okay? Also, I send out a monthly newsletter, and that's going coming out in a couple of days uh, as of this recording. So you want to be signed up so you can get all the Man Whore Podcast news. That's where I made the announcement about me and Paige making things official. Do you want to wait three weeks to find out like everyone else? Or do you want to be special and get on that mailing list? So go do that. How about that Nina Hartley episode, huh, people? Holy shit. That was an amazing one. I, I, I blown the fuck away. I, can, I consider myself a somewhat lucky man. That kiss at the end, that was pretty unexpected. Just to make sure it wasn't like an on-air fluke, I, I asked for a kiss as I was walking out the door. And I was like, hey, can I get a kiss goodbye? And she's like, of course. I was like, oh my God, that was real. It wasn't just for the microphones. <laughs> so that was very cool. Uh, if you remember back with that Andy episode, my episode with Andy, the girl from Random Acts of Muff Dive, I took an email question from a listener who wanted advice on how to ask his girlfriend to become polyamorous or non-monogamous. His concern was that he had a history of cheating. Uh, he got, I got a response. It says, hey, Billy, um, the topic, polyamory, ethical non-monogamy, has also come up briefly and uh, she quizzed me about it. I took your advice and I reminded her I love her and have been faithful. She did flip out that I even entertained the idea of sleeping with other women, but after a little bit of time, she calmed down, but she did make it beyond clear that a relationship with her will be monogamous or the relationship will not exist. I love her. Something I don't say lightly. So being monogamous is a price I will gladly pay. I feel, God forbid, that if we ever split up, then I will be taking a poly approach from then on, but uh, she's not something that I can give up. He included a picture. They, uh, they look super cute together, so uh, good luck to them. I think that's uh, great. He took a chance. He asked for what he wanted. He, he got a no, and the relationship is still fine. It's okay. It's, if you want things that you don't think your, other, your partner or partners are going to be up for, it doesn't hurt to ask. So take, take a chance, people. The worst thing that happens is they say no. If they break up with you, that's not the worst that can happen because you don't want to stay with that person uh, who breaks up with you just for asking. So yeah. Uh, hey, this is important. Uh, please make sure you rate and review uh, the Man Whore Podcast on iTunes. It's important for reasons I don't want to get into and explain, but if you have an iTunes account, do make sure to do that. If you don't have an iTunes account, you don't want to make one. Leave a rating or whatever system is in place on uh, the podcatcher of your choice. And, and even more importantly than rating and reviewing the show, share the Man Whore podcast with your friends. All right, that's, that's the most important thing you can do. But how do you think the big shows got that big? 
because every single listener shared the show with like five of their friends because they were like, hey, this is a kick-ass podcast and you should be listening to it too. I know it's a sexual show. I know the name Man Whore Podcast is a, you know, a little inflammatory. But look, we're all fucking, we're all touching ourselves and a lot of us like podcasts. So next time podcasts come up, don't be shy to say, yeah, I listen to a show where a guy talks to his exes every week about sex and dating. You should really check it out. I want this show to, you know, spread like strep throat at a sex party. I should know about that. People say, what's, uh, what's your most common STD, Billy? I say strep throat. They're like, that's not an STD. I'd be like, it is the way I get strep throat. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm putting this out there. Uh, I'm putting a little feeler out there. Folks, any uh, graphic designers, any artists listening, uh, listen up. I'm in the market for a new uh, logo or album artwork. It's been uh, about two and a half years. I think it's time to switch things up a little bit. The album artwork in place right now with the with the box of candy. It's great. It was done by my god brother, Branson Belchie. You can look up his stuff on bbstard.tumblr.com. But uh, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in the mood for a, a switch, a change, something new. Problem is, I don't really know what I want. Part of me thinks, you know, in the light of like WTF or You Made It Weird, like a piece of original artwork that speaks to the show. And another part of me is a little lazier and think, oh, let's do the Dan Savage route and just have like my headshot uh, in a cool graphic-y layout with uh, the title of the show. So I don't really know. But if you uh, think you have an idea, feel free to email me, manwhorepod at gmail.com, either like a light sketch uh, concept art of what you had in mind, or you could just put it in words. And if it's something that might be a fit, then, you know, let's fucking do it up and take a look. Okay, I can't really pay right now, but if I uh, end up choosing your artwork uh, to, to use, I will give you access to all of the past bonus episodes of the Man Whore Podcast. So that means the Nina Hartley mini bonus episode. That means all of the Steve Dean online dating expert episodes. That means the full-length bonus episodes with Tina Horn and Kate Chiplinski and Emma Willman. That means all the mini bonus episodes with... Uh, previous partners of mine that I clipped up just for my patrons on Patreon. So again, uh, if you're interested, if you have an idea, manwhorepod at gmail.com. This week's guest is stand-up comedian John Ozale. Um, he's, a, he's a very funny comedian in New York City. Actually, he's also the, I don't mean to list this as like a credit, but he's also the uh, the ex-boyfriend of previous Manwhore podcast guest, Caitlin Bailey whose one-woman show, Contagious, I saw last week uh, with Paige. It was, it was fantastical. I hope uh, some of you went out and saw it. But, uh, but Jono is a uh, touring comedian. I see a lot of his posts on Facebook. They are, they're very woke, very feminist. And I figured uh, he and I should talk. Uh, we talk about a wide range of topics from you know online dating to spanking to questioning one's sexuality, as well as Jono's uh, late blooming into masturbation and sex. Uh, I think I think highlight of the episode is I'm not lame. I'm not going to jerk off to my girlfriend and you'll have to listen in to hear what that's all about. So check out me with comedian Jono Zale. You did webcam? Yeah, I did that in college for a little bit. What did you do for webcam? Do you whatever the guy paying three dollars a minute wanted. <laughs> you, you'd like show him your wiener often. Yeah, that was usually it. Wow. I remember like when I was in grad school and uh, that's when chat roulette was first a thing. Right. Which like sh- so, so immediately turned into see guys jacking off into a camera. That, the history of technology <laughs> has been how can I uh, use my dick with this? Weirdly, the only like very successful app that's done the opposite was Snapchat, which was like um, primarily, at least in, my, in the zeitgeist, a dick pic app right there's like oh it's a way to send pictures with them disappearing and that's pivoted into like one of the biggest social media platforms now i still won't do snapchat i still can't seem to get on that bandwagon i I have an account but i never do anything with it well i did why i'm going i'm going to attempt to because i've had people say you should get on snapchat so i was like i I just don't want to have to consume anyone else's bullshit you know right exactly i was like if i can do it without following anyone or getting yelled at that i don't follow them back Mm -hmm. i'll do it i just want to like vomit my shit out there out there yeah yeah and and you can do that 
And, and like, even if you are friends with them, you don't have to look at any of their stuff. Right. No, it's not like Twitter where you have to like scroll through everyone. And then people will say, like, why don't you follow me on Twitter? I follow you. This oh, is yeah. bullshit. It's such a big... I'm, I'm because you're not... You don't do anything... You don't say anything funny on Twitter. I just... Oh. I can't... I, I wouldn't follow anyone they would ever do replies to anyone because it's like, I don't want to ch- check back t- t- 10 tweets ago to right. see what the hell you guys are talking about. Now they actually make it a little bit more linear and it's better, but still, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a weird world out there. The, the the etiquette in the follow back and the reciprocation, right? And the usage of uh, whether or not to put dicks out there. Because still, right. any social media platform, dicks will be sent out. I've gotten dicks on Twitter. Like really, I had a guy. He was like, I don't know if he was spamming me or he was just a big fan. But like, he was sending pictures of him coming. I was like, I don't need to. <laughs> I don't need to see this. That's a pretty hard thing to capture in a in a picture. It was one of those three picture oh, tweets. Okay, <laughs> and I don't know why, but I felt the need to look at each individual one, and then and then blocked them. But sure. um, wise. But I'm here with uh, with with fellow comedian Jono Zale. I said that right. Close enough, Jono ah. Zale. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's tricky. I don't I don't even pronounce it correctly, based on like my like the phonetics of my of the country it's from. Like I'm from, or my name is from Hungary. Okay. And like it's it's spelled a little differently. I changed the spelling to make it a little bit more phonetic, but it should be uh, Salai or something like that. But it's it's Zalay. But that here. seemed way too you know, yeah, Eastern European. Yeah, might. they they <laughs> they pronounce things weird. It's a very it's very guttural. And then like John, I was just a Hungarian like nickname on Jonathan, which is what I was you know grew up with. All right. Well, what I thought was interesting. One of the things I thought was interesting with you when I reached out was you immediately were like, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm like a man whore too. I was like, <laughs> okay. Uh, like, I was, all I heard was the title. I was like, "I'm in." <laughs> Finally, a podcast for me. <laughs> well, I was, very, I was. I'm always curious because a lot of the I've seen things the way you post. So you're you don't you're not like a typical dude, bro. But a lot of the guys who are the first to say like, "Yeah, man, I smash mad puss." I'm like, "Not nah, you don't really." Mm-hmm. You know, because when anyway, I tell them, well, I, I mean, they might be mad puss after you try to smash it. Like it's this <laughs> just angry at you for not smashing it correctly. Correct. <laughs> Yeah, so I always found that strange that uh, I always it's that you self appoint yourself as a man horse. I was curious why. I, I'm just you call uh, yourself that, right? Well, I, I uh, seek out the the company of ladies, and and uh, it's usually very mutually beneficial. <laughs> and, but does that happen so much that you like? Why? Why man whore? Why? Um, I I try to, I I call, I call myself more of a traveling scoundrel. A traveling scoundrel. That's that's the that's the nomenclature I use because I I mostly because uh, I travel for comedy like mm. not not all the time but like several months a year I'll be on the road and like that's like the time that I because I you know I use like uh, the dating apps and such on when I'm traveling and I use them very vigorously and try to you know the meet people around the country and while you're there for a weekend exactly did you do you find it fun like on a, i'm assuming like tinder and bumble and shit right yeah do you find it fun seeing the difference between the photo the the women in different parts of the country mm. based on like just photos on tinder Yo, oh, yeah well i i would say like it's not the different parts of the country it's the size of the town okay so uh, like what do you mean well so like you're gonna find like many beautiful women in any city that like you've heard of like that has a sports team, mm-hmm. you know, like that, that size of a city where there's like half a million to a million people, there's going to be a great crop of whomever sexually, uh, sexual age people that are, that you're into. And they're, they they have, they might have a certain style, like in Arizona, they might have more be- bleach blonde hair and tans and like certain like fashion, uh, accessories with them as opposed to like a Midwest city or something like that. Mm. But like, there's, there's like a general, you know enough people so that there's like you're gonna swipe across a ton of very attractive ladies but whereas like if you go to a smaller town you're gonna get swift swipe, swipe through like five and then there's like a hundred like oh no <laughs> there's this is this is <laughs> this is a uh, dropped off a cliff you're saying the bigger cities are more attractive than the smaller towns well because there are more of them and like they i think whatever dating app uh like what's it called uh, algorithm Mm. generally like puts the like attra- attractive people first so that you like are more excited about swiping through because if you, if you put like you know 50 people that are that never get swiped on 
up front, you'll just stop swiping. It's right. like, well, everyone's ugly here. I feel like whatever. I've run out of all the pretty people in New York City now on Tinder. <laughs> I've had that thing since it came out. So since like 2011, I've mm. had it. Oh, off really? And, off and on. Yeah. Interesting. But uh, now I, sw- I, sw- I do a lot of left swipes now. Mm. But what I, th- I, I remember when I was in Lovo, I, uh, I, I thought that was funny because I just saw women with pictures with guns in them. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I've never seen this in New York or L.A. or boston or anywhere else that is one thing i forgot yeah you're right <laughs> there is there is the different accessories yeah not, not just the style but the accessories <laughs> definitely in the, in the red states you see a lot more guns ladies with guns confederate flags all sorts of uh they, and they also in, in on bumble at least have the like political logos you can put on them yeah where it's like i'm voting for the democrat or i'm feeling the burn or like don't be a chump vote for trump <laughs> and I was like, "All right." Even, even Trump's the Trump people's slogans still have insults in them, like know, really right? lame. Because Trump, Trump, all he does is have lame insults. Yeah, Go- he's just you know goofy, Elizabeth, crooked, mm-hmm. yeah, tiny. Uh, don't be a chump. It's like, <laughs> come on, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> I haven't gotten on the Bumble yet. I feel like that's something I'm going to start now that I've like run through Tinder. I, I prefer uh, Bumble in my experience. It's like it. It seems like it's a lot more. It's like it's almost like a classier Tinder or whatever. It, it feels like uh, where where the more woke people would be. You, yeah, and from, it is, from the from the type of posting you do, I was like, you are. He's a very you're a very feminist, hey. uh, woke individual. I try to be woke. Yeah, <laughs> I just try to use the phrase properly, as I hear yeah, that's yeah. the cool thing to say. That's like, <laughs> the meme I tried to create was the one with the uh, Walter from. Uh, the big Lebowski was like, so I'm calmer than you are. It's like, woker than you are. Like, Perfectly woke, dude. Woker than you are. Just like, I'm woke. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I think, because Bumble was started by women. Yeah, it was started by one of the co-founders of Tinder when she got right. ousted from Tinder. Yeah, it's just like, hey, like pe- dudes are way too aggressive out of nowhere. Let's let the women initiate the conversation and hopefully we'll start on a much more hopefully <laughs> yeah hopefully although weirdly the, the the one of the differences is you can send pictures in the messaging portion of of bumble so how so i'm sure that has just turned into dick pic central probably i mean i think they do show you like a somewhat smaller pix- pixelized version of it so you can like kind of determine if you even want to open it oh yes yeah. so you can get an idea you, you can sense idea the what, outline yeah of what, what it, it is if you're seeing an, an oblong object that's a giant <laughs> cylinder that's taking up most of the sc- of the <laughs> shot maybe don't open it but then that just that just challenges someone to be more creative yeah with their dick pics be like right. well how can i surround this with other objects to make the scene? <laughs> <laughs> like maybe it's just a bunch of whiskey uh, uh, bottles, but one of them's just a big cock. Huh? Yeah, it's like it's like where's Waldo, but with dicks. <laughs> That's fun, man. Um, I so you dated um, the former guest of the show, Caitlin Bailey. Yeah, and I in asking, I, I reached out to her, be like, what what should I know? Like, what is there anything I need to to know about him? And the oh, first and only thing I get is. He thinks light spanking is kinky. (laughs) (laughs) And there was part of me that was like, oh, please let that just be representative of his sex life as a whole. Like, (laughs) (laughs) well, yeah, I mean, certainly, uh, Caitlin is going to have a broader spectrum of kink than I will, Mm -hmm. because I've mostly engaged in just your very vanilla, non kinky sex most of my life. Um, and, and like, I, I had a, a joke about like kinky sex in my act where I refer to spanking as like part of it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and she's seeing it being like, that was barely spanking. <laughs> yeah. And like, I don't think that was, I mean, certainly that's like among like the most, pro- the more prominent things that like I do, uh, that is like in the realm, I guess, of kinky, I guess is spanking, but yeah, uh, she's not wrong. <laughs> like I don't get, I don't get into a ton. I don't, I don't uh, venture into much BDSM stuff. She she like introduced me to all those words. Like I will, I will give her credit for. Her Did she bring you any like parties? No, we never went to. We were never um, non monogamous. Like we when we were together, um, we were either like hooking up and like just non monogamous and, and like would have sex with each other, and then 
other people and not be dating. But when we were dating, we were monogamous. We tried mm. to go on Thrinder once, which is like the threesome yeah. Tinder. They um, actually just changed its name. Oh, yeah. Because it was getting su- it was going to get sued by Tinder. So <laughs> That's dumb. Yeah. It's such a, it's a, it's a tribute. Take, it's take a tribute. A, take a compliment, Tinder. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I, we, we like maybe made one or two matches, but we never hooked, uh, met up with them. And I think we broke up shortly after. Oh. So we never, it never came to be, unfortunately. Well, I, I related to the light spanking thing because my girlfriend is very, uh, she's like a very kinky person and mm. she, I mean, like she'll go out where we have an open relationship and she'll go do stuff like with some girlfriends of hers and dummy people and she'll come back with bruises. And then, and then I've been trying, like, I'll try to indulge, like, I'll try to give some serious spanks. Mm-hmm. And then one, like, on my birthday, we had, like, um, she surprised me with a little, like, foursome with, like, a really hot friend of hers and, like, uh, her guy. And and we're in uh, her the, the woman's room, and she's, like, trying to show me how to spank. She's like, this is how you warm her up. And she's giving these, like spanks that to me were hard yeah and, and she's like no these are the warm-ups they prepare the skin to be you know bruised and stuff and i was like oh those were those were those are like my spanks yeah <laughs> i found out that my spanking is very pedestrian <laughs> like yeah. my spanks are warm-up spanks yeah yeah like you see like a t-ball thing it's like oh shit that's just my major leagues yeah and then <laughs> i see her like wail on her like oh i am not good at this mm. <laughs> yeah i mean i I would not like my severity of spanks was probably pretty pedestrian. Uh, I but like you leave the occasion when it leaves a mark. You're just like ah, you feel good about it. You feel like yeah, I'm doing this. That's yeah, made some real <laughs> real contact there. Yeah, it's progress. Although this I did uh, I did on did on Sunday out of nowhere. I, I just thought of doing it while she was just walking by me, and I was like cleaning up around my room. I had a t shirt in my hand, and I I did a rat tail on her, mm-hmm. and she liked that. I was like ooh okay, I'm uh figuring things out yeah there's there's some bro culture that can transfer into consensual man on woman sex she's like where'd you pick this up i was like i've played football since fourth grade like, <laughs> <laughs> there's some very surprisingly kinky uh <laughs> grab ass thing going on in uh male locker rooms so uh, yeah sometimes a little more than just uh some grab ass but uh, according to them it's just bro jobs it's not gay. Uh, yeah that, that's just camaraderie According to Dr. Jane Ward, she uh, confirms that it's still not gay. There's a whole book. Really? It's called Not Gay, Sex Between Straight White Men. Wow. It's very specifically straight white dudes, and that through like homophobia and Why misogyny it- and racism, they can like fuck each other and blow each other but it's not gay and that they can still like retain a heterosexual identity interesting that like race comes into it well because for them it's apparently they're they have the whole like black dudes have the whole down low thing and it's like that's a whole different culture huh so and also like uh like apparently like black people are not as kind to gay men Oh, right so apparently that plays a factor culturally that like so white guys can get away with that I kind think, of whereas like like uh, and still like be like a dude latino it's it's sort of a mix where it's like some are very against it and some it's just like totally accepted there's like a bunch of like cholos who are openly gay and it's fine yeah and and everyone accepts them that's interesting yeah i don't know the whole dynamics of uh interracial gay mm. relationships it's an interesting read uh it's a, it's a very fun read huh like i learned that the that the hell's angels like in the fifties and sixties, they'd be biking around. They might be at like a bar somewhere, and just like the, some fem, like a feminine dude would come up and be like, "Want to blow him?" And he'd be like, "Yeah, sure." So he'll accept the blowjob. And if someone were to be like, "Gay," it's like, "Who gives a fuck? I'm a fucking man." Like, it was, yeah. so it was more about masculinity and femininity versus the actual sex act that you did. I wonder if that does that translate into prison gay. Uh, I think that might be a little different. But I'm assuming there's more she, power dynamics involved in that one. Yeah, she didn't bring it up in the book. More, her example is more like the the military, fraternity life, um, things like that. Interesting. So, hmm. it's cool stuff. Yeah, no, I, it's a whole new. I, I <laughs> yeah, I, I've uh, <laughs> experienced a little of that. I uh, there was a, I, as much as I am straight. There was like a month in college. I thought I might have been gay. Yeah, it was all and it's just stupid because it was uh, because I had a gay dream and I was like, oh, shit, what is this subconscious telling me or whatever? And uh, the gay dream uh, was in in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> OK, go on. And like and like I, I have whatever a joke about it. Like it's, yeah. it turns out like after like a, you know, 
like a month or so of contemplation and soul searching i it turns out i wasn't gay i would just do anything for a lightsaber do anything for a lightsaber like i just basically suck some jedi's dick and like i wasn't happy about it even in the dream so it's really just it's and he's giving you a lightsaber in yeah return like for it. it was like so it's it seemed like, like a jedi ritual almost a ritual almost or maybe, like a hazing like hey to be a jedi you gotta suck this there dick. you go and that 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 outer space frat culture hey there's there's some kinky shit going on the jedis we don't know about that the jedi porn stuff yeah. i'm sure there's a whole what is sites it? upon sites of literotica <laughs> i'm sure just on star wars with those padawans with their with their rat tails just of darth vader you know like he's such a controlling dominant force in the universe uh, but behind closed doors he likes to be fucking whipped and tied up and sure Think about what Darth Vader could do with the that Sith choke. Could he choke himself? Oh man, he can auto erotic <laughs> asphyxiate himself. Right, but does he still need a spotter? Ooh, Probably. Yeah. But who can he trust? He's got. He kills every spotter, so the word doesn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he killed Obi Wan Kenobi. He knew too many secrets. He knew way too many secrets. His own mass old master. Oh man, that's <laughs> that's funny. I I've never gone through like an extended period of time where I thought I was in the dudes, but I'll go to like a self check in, uh-huh. like every eight months. I'll be like, do I like cock? And I'll I'll do a scan down of a dude, and as soon as I get to the dick, is when I just go like, mm. yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I I think it's healthy. I was like until I don't know of some age, you know who who the fuck knows. Yeah. Like like Louis says, like maybe I'll wake up. I want to do the second half gay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean that's kind of what I was like concerned about in college. I was like, oh, it, I, this maybe this is a late, like a latent mm. like I've hit some level of secondary puberty where I get some this new influx of hormones once I get to, to get to college or something like that. Uh, and but now yeah, it turns out not at all. The Would case. that have been like <laughs> a like a life crushing thing for you at that time in your life? Oh, I was very or, conflicted. Sure, like I. <clears throat> I mean, like your attitude towards like gays, like oh, I, I was very. Now. I was even even like my freshman year. Like I think I bonded with my freshman year roommate. Like first w- week we moved in over like how much how okay we were with gay people and how unacceptable it was to be like bashing them or anything like that. I'm so I'm so into gay people. Nah, man, I'm more I'm more woke than you are. I'll suck your <laughs> dick up to prove how just, into gay yeah. people I am. It's just a bro, bro job. It's not the, even gay, but we could do gay There have been things. many yeah. gay porns that started just that way. I'm sure they, I'm <laughs> sure they have. Uh, so yeah, I was like philosophically and like in practice very pro gay and and like but still the internal um dialogue in my head was like oh shit what if i'm gay what i'm gonna have to tell everyone my parents are gonna be pissed somehow even though they probably wouldn't have been it's not the fear of being gay it's the fear of like i'm not my life like just my lifestyle changing yeah i gotta buy i gotta buy new clothes i have a whole new identity (laughs) i have to worry about yeah yeah wardrobe the whole thing yeah I get that, but you were also like a late bloomer, so like around that time was totally. probably you said it was uh, I was when still you first. A virgin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I was. I lost my virginity. I was twenty. You I had mean, the like, gay dream. You're like, I gotta go fuck a woman quick <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck the gay away. <laughs> fuck the gay away. Oh God, no! Because uh, that's actually a thing. Oh, is it? I bet it is. Because it's the pray the gay away for sure. Pray the gay away. And gay sure conversion it, therapy. They'll, they'll they'll do that. They'll pair up like someone who's a lesbian, someone and a gay man, and make them fuck and make them fuck as like a last oh, level, so like unhealthy. level seven of becoming straight again. It's some fucked up shit. That's real fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but slowly but surely, states are, are outlawing that, so that's good. Thank goodness. Uh, yeah, the um, I had a college girlfriend, so like I started dating her, uh, and <laughs> having fun with science with my light bulbs. But um, is it because it's going through me into the mic? Probably. Okay. Yeah. Science is fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got a touch lamp and, yeah, yeah. Having fun with it, and that's what's causing the little buzzing sound if you can hear it uh yeah so i i just i i cared enough about my virgin i didn't want to like stay virgin till i was married or anything like that but like i cared enough about it for i, I wanted it to be you know it's like whatever special like prom thing type type of like have a someone i trust and like, someone you like someone yeah. you want to talk to right so i dated someone in college and like we dated for a while before we had sex um and and then once we did it we just you know th- we did it throughout college basically okay yeah anything notable or special about the uh the night of oh yeah actually <laughs> and was john Turturro there um uh, 
Um, I almost like uh, there's two times I've like hooked up on a beach. Both of them could have been my virginity. The first time a lady wanted to have sex with me, but it didn't happen. I was on a beach when I was like right before I started dating my college girlfriend. Okay. And then when I actually like lost my virginity to my college girlfriend, it was also on a beach. But the problem is like we went, it was really, really late at night. Um, it was really dark out. But like the the sand, it was like a high tide. So like where we were planning on on doing it on the beach was like kind of washed out and the, the tide was too high. So we had to go further and further down the beach with like this big like blankety uh, sleeping bag thing. Okay. Uh, and so we, we went further than we anticipated. And what we didn't realize is like in the, you know, darkness of night, we'd walked into a, a native bird preserve. So like there's this like endangered bird species who's like, that's their habitat, like these sand dunes or whatever. So uh, we have sex. <laughs> then like an hour or two later at 5.30 a.m. when the sun is coming up, we are awoken by a park ranger <laughs> who's like, hey, you guys are not supposed to be here. You're in a native bird preserve. You need to get the hell out of here. And you're just like, you're going to cause something to go extinct. clothes were strewn about, used condom, like just all this stuff. And like, my girlfriend at the time was like, uh, like cowering underneath the blanket thing so that he yeah. couldn't see her or whatever because she's too embarrassed. I was like, just hey, so, just so it's like, you yeah, know, I'm just here just, jerking off by yeah, myself yeah. in the just like I have, I'd like to jerk off to lady clothes and into a <laughs> condom. <laughs> uh, but we'll be, we'll be on our way. Don't you worry, officer. <laughs> so yeah, we, um, does everyone in California have sex on beaches? No, but beach sex is vastly overrated. It's, it's I, I would imagine it's, it's, here's the thing it's cold. It's wet and it's sandy. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people forget is also a lot of beaches have these little sand gnats, these little flies that fly everywhere along the the water. And so, like, you're just you're basically just in the worst. It, like, there's nothing sexy about it other than the view potentially. But you're, it's at night, so like mm -hmm. all you hear is like the occasional wave in the background. Wow, the movies never make it seem that way. No, yeah, like if you're if you're it's, it's like it's in the day and like you're playing in the in the ocean waves and whatever it's fun to make out but even then like you don't want to have sex in the water <laughs> the ocean's kind of gross yeah and uh and like water's not that good of a lubricant and all, the, all the, there's so many things that could go wrong in a, a beach. lot of those things you do just for the story yeah oh yeah and i've actually I've had sex once on the beach after that and it was like a lot better but i was way more drunk yeah. and it was like who cares we're just having sex like i want to have sex on the subway but uh, I know that's not going to probably be even that much fun. Right. I think I just want to do it because I want to have sex on the subway. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like some some of those like belt notches are just for, for the story to say you did them. Like I've had uh, Mile High Club sex ah, on, on a plane. <laughs> yeah. And it was great uh, as a activity in the bathroom or did check. you pull it off in the in the seats in the bathroom. OK. But like that's what um, the thing is like because the bathroom's so small. It's not hot. It's a logistical. Sex. Yeah. Nightmare. Like you're just like, and, and how much time can you spend there? There's no, there's no foreplay. You're just like, all right, we just got to get this in and out, in and out, and right. then get the hell out of here before the stewardess or flight attendant, uh, <laughs> steward or stewardess, <laughs> non gender specific flight attendant <laughs> comes and like knocks on the door or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it, it came together rather beautifully, actually, because like usually there's flight attendants on both sides of the cabin. Um, and so it's hard to like get past them. So like we just happened to catch them at a moment when like the one from the back walked forward and not just past our seat so we could both pull out wherever she wasn't looking and monitoring the bathrooms. Regular bathroom sex, way more fun than. Oh, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. I have, I walk around New York city like, you know, like uh, I imagine someone who's like a, a location scout for movies and TV. They walk around New York city and they see things and they be like, I can shoot this here. Oh, that's a good spot for a thing. I walk around New York City uh, looking at like alleyways, staircases, and I go in the bathrooms. I go like, oh, I could. T this is a good place to have sex. And I, can I have like a mental map of places mm. in New York City that are good spots to have sex or bars. Like I'm thinking about starting an Instagram that's just bar bathrooms that are good to have sex in. <laughs> Most people th <laughs> keep track of the good bathrooms because so they can shit in them. <laughs> like, yeah, no, no, like, no, no, no. I walk want... around the city. He's like, oh, yeah. that's Starbucks. I, just... I know the combo for that one. Uh, there's not. There's very few homeless people that shower in there. Mm -hmm. I could probably, <laughs> if I'm if I'm 
press for time. I could go take a shit in there. Well, it ends up being a dual purpose because then I also know where I can take a shit yeah. nearby, oh, but yeah. I also know where I could uh, fuck my girlfriend nearby or I know where I could go take a shit and then have my girlfriend meet me and mm-hmm. do that nearby. Yeah, it's it's a good mental Rolodex. There you go. Like there's, a, there's an alley down in the financial district. It's called Maiden Lane. And so it's like very small side street. I don't even think it goes anywhere, but I'm like, I'm having sex there at some point. <laughs> so you should like, I mean, you could feasibly develop an app of places of the bank. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> of like places that are conducive. Like, and you can, and you can leave ratings behind like, Oh, this lock doesn't work on this bathroom. Don't try this or would not recommend. They're like, they don't, they don't clean it often enough. You want to go partners? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll have uh, ratings for public uh, sex location i already know the publicist who can make that big <laughs> okay yeah no i'm in that's cool man that's cool um, I've always, i always have the app ideas that i never follow through on yeah what, what were some others unless you don't want to give the gold I mean, away uber obviously <laughs> yeah i was thinking how many times did i want to just hail a car mm. now i i forget what they all are now but i at one point around i was like i'm gonna do something with these nope no nope. a shot <laughs> nope no follow through mm. i am proud to say that the man Whore podcast is sponsored by you the listeners yeah, this is a primarily listener-funded podcast, and I'm very happy to be able to say that. I don't know if I've told you lately, but you're all fucking awesome. Thank you for supporting me as an independent content creator on Patreon. And the way I like to thank my fan whores is by giving them all a shout-out during the impersonal Patreon thank you roll call. So right now, I'm going to say a very special thank you to Jennifer C., S.B., Lance, Madeline B., Jazz O., Jeff C., Dave K., Justin C., Nelly H., Ramon F., Sarah B., and Sarah S., Lauren A., Prickly Peach, what an interesting nickname, Lawrence B., Jeffrey J., Holly F., Christina D., Nicole M., Doug R., Danielle G., I think, Ed B., Jessica K., Michael P., Millie W., Jeremy B., Frank D., Kyle H., Brian W., Danielle D.P., Megs N., Andrew R., Ben W., Charles G., and still more names to go. Chris with a K, Derek N., Sarah M., Carrie W., Catherine B., Alex S., Chris W., Lauren M., Gregory Y., Anna Super Slut. Sean B, Dervla, Sean N, Julian D, Dave K, Scott B, Ashley J, CJK, Steve Dean, almost there. Toby T, Alfredo A, Mark G, Emily S, Greg A, Rachel O, Ben B, and Jeff Z. Thank you all for your uh, generous pledges. And you too can support Sex Positive Conversations by donating to the Man Whore Podcast on Patreon. You can pledge as little as a dollar per month and you can cancel at any time. To do so, head on over to manwhorepod.com and click the Patreon banner on the side. Or you can download the Patreon app and you can find me on there. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Now let's get back to me and John Ozele. This is another thing that was interesting. I was telling you about the Nina Hartley episode that was uh, coming out and... You were like, oh, yeah, I don't really watch porn. No. Like, I'm just getting back into it. I yeah. Like, I, thought, I find it interesting that you're getting back into porn. Yeah. Well, um, there's just, there's a couple reasons why I don't generally watch porn. Mm. One is, like, when I do masturbate, it's usually in the shower. Okay. And I do not have a waterproof iPad. All right. Or phone or any kind of thing that I can just take porn in there. And I don't want to watch it first. Why the it. shower? Uh, It's just clean, no, whatever, easy cleanup. That's where I like started masturbating was in the shower or whatever. And like, I don't know, it just seems, and I I have a vivid imagination. Do you water? Do you use like the shampoo and shit? Um, Water and soap, like uh, specific soaps. Because like Irish Spring is might as well just be sandpaper. Okay. Um, But you like, you just lube up your hands. Well, yeah, well, it literally kind of is, right? It doesn't have little specks. I'm sure, yeah. Like whatever it is, it's just very abrasive. Okay. So you need a moisturizing soap like Dove. Or equivalent, a body soap. A body these soap. are body soaps. Yeah, yeah. This is these are like uh, bars of soap. Not, oh, bars. Not, yeah, okay, not not body wash. Well, because yeah, but I learned that lesson in high school. I used to masturbate in the shower. I went to a boarding school, okay. so it's like I never really had privacy. So the best place to jerk off would be the showers. Oh, okay, but they were group. They weren't group showers, but it was like stalls. Yeah, where yeah, there's yeah. no upper closure like you could mm-hmm. you could hand soap over the thing to somebody, right? Exactly. But that was the best place to. Do it, but I learned the hard way that you had to. I would use shampoo or a conditioner, and then it sometimes, sometimes it gets in the 
in the urethra and oh burn oh it hurts yeah it burns. oh it hurts i haven't felt that feeling uh until like a month or two ago and i had to get the cotton swab for gonorrhea mm. testing uh and she went in and that oh, was God. yeah anything involved in the urethra not fun no not sounding fun. i don't know why how people are turned on like do you boo boo but how you are turned on by b- having your urethra dildoed is beyond me yeah that seems like a real so painful <laughs> point of no return yeah Ugh. but okay so so Bars of soap and water. Yes. Not conditioners, and shampoos, body, like no liquid things. Yeah. I bet you could use a conditioner depending, like in a, in a pinch, like at a hotel or something like that. They and work in a pinch, but the problem is if you get it in, then you, know, you yeah, risk. It's really, a risk. It's a, It wasn't totally. every time, but it was a risky situation. For sure. Yeah. it's I've, I've had that happen as well. Okay. So yeah, shower. So like that's why no porn. And like when, and also like I would, I've gotten to the age now, like where. What, how old are you? 34. 34. Okay. So like I can I can basically just come once a day. Like so if I'm going on a date with a, a lady later in the evening, I don't want to even want to jerk off cuz I won't be able to come as well or at all later in the evening. And you don't feel like a compulsion to have to come more than one. That must be nice. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I just have the one wanting to come all day all the time is exhausting. Oh, I, I bet. I I look forward to a day where Mhm. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one exception I have is like when I'm not at home, when I'm on the road like that, then it's more than once a day. And like, especially if you're in a hotel, so there's something about a hotel where you just got to get it out of here. <laughs> like, it's just a, it's a weird, like, feeling of the context clues. Well, I'm like, I just hotels. don't, want, I don't want to be the only one who didn't jerk off in that hotel right. room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I'm just, if I'm just laying in everyone else's <laughs> residue of jizz, like I'm their bitch now, I got to spread, I got to pay it forward. Pay it forward. <laughs> uh, and then part of that's not boredom. Like I jerk off the most if I'm bored. Totally. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. I just, I go through phases, I guess, where like, I, if I think I'm about to start dating someone or something like that or or whatever, if I they're like, oh, I better, it's like a going out of business sale. <laughs> Get these jerks now while you can. Yeah, yeah. If I, if I even like back in the day, I'd like match with someone on Tinder or something like that. I was like, oh, this girl looks really great as a person, not just hot, but like, you know, like, oh, this. I bet Do you jerk I'm, off the girls on Tinder? Mm, rarely. They'd have to have some really good pictures or whatever. Cause, but I also like, I just don't look at visual medium. I use my imagination. Okay. So like I get a, a visual in my head and then I concoct to like my own little scene. What what would be an example of that? Of of just things that happen? Yeah. What would be like, what, what, like, I mean, do you have like, yeah. What would like, what's the scene? Who are you casting in these? Generally people I am aware of, they're not like celebrities or anything. They're just people, spank bank people, you know, like people you interact with on a, uh, that cashier you always see mm-hmm, or exactly yeah. yeah and then i like just create a very reasonable realistic scenario porn type scene mm-hmm. and and like I, you know you, the way you jump it back and forth within a porn like oh there's the blowjob scene there's the you know the doggy style scene, all, all that kind of stuff i jump back and forth in in my own imagination as well but i also have a very more or less realistic scenario huh Actually, the, the because of that, and like when I was dating Caitlin or, or anyone, like I don't like the idea of cheating on anyone. Yeah. So like in this um, realistic scenario, when I'd be like jerking off while I was dating someone, like I didn't like the like it wasn't sexy to me the idea of cheating on someone. It would it would kind of bum me out. But I also didn't want like the like in this realistic scenario her to just be okay with me fucking someone else. So you'd always jerk off to the girlfriend? So no, that's the thing. Oh, it's okay. like, I'm not lame. I'm not going to jerk off some, to my girlfriend like some, <laughs> like some dweeb. <laughs> what kind of... I was about to say that's so sweet and that's no, like every, no. what every girl seems to want. It becomes so weird and creepy because like I would, I would like basically concoct this, this parallel universe where like my girlfriend either never existed or died tragically and told me to live on <laughs> like it's almost in the future it's like we didn't like we broke up or, or like we like are no longer together but it was because like we moved apart it was just like and you some... never just cast a different dude no no i'm always me well no i meant like you wouldn't just be uh well i i have this girlfriend so i'm not gonna fantasize other people and uh-huh. i'm not lame so i don't fantasize her so you wouldn't just fantasize other people fucking no i i, I generally am person you know point of view okay POV. Are yours are yours POV or are you 
going out of body and you're looking at like your whole self. Sometimes I do like a whole. I, I never. I'm never in them, even though even if I am looking at the girl from a different angle. Okay. Okay. Because if I do, if I if I could do that, I would just give myself abs and look at myself with <laughs> abs and be like, oh, that would be nice one day. Or you can just do sit ups and give yourself abs. It's never gonna happen. <laughs> like I'll do the sit ups and stuff. I but my diet, I will never, I will never Fair have abs. Enough. I'm just becoming stop okay masturbating. With that. And go to the gym. I mean, I go for my runs, but you know, I just like bad food. But that's a whole, that's a whole different thing. Fair enough. That's wild. Um. <laughs> So now you're getting back into watching porn. Yeah, yeah. I've like just in the last month, basically, I've I've uh, gotten back into it a little bit. Just gone to the the porn hubs and the red tubes. How long since you had watched porn? Like not each time, but like since you had been regularly regularly <sighs> college. So it's just a whole different landscape. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you were, like you were doing in, you had internet porn for undergrad, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, but okay. like the internet. I mean, the internet porn then wasn't a website. It was just like you'd find some video on a server somewhere that was shared in the dorms or something like or that. Or like a LimeWire. LimeWire. Yeah, like I had files on my computer of porn. It wasn't. Yep. I wasn't going to a website. Like I'd have like the oh, there's the Paris Hilton sex tape. It's boring, but I have it <laughs> just for posterity, right? Or whatever. And then like oh, there's that one that I like or whatever. And like I haven't, I've yet to find after having get, jumped into it, um, uh, that like what That's a, <laughs> science is fun. Science is fun. <laughs> Touch anything electronic and it gives it a buzz. Uh, yeah, I'm yet to find like a video that like hits all the notes. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's I have big complaints about porn. Like just like I rarely like the people involved. Like they just look like <laughs> shitty people to me. Like the guys all look like scumbags. It's mostly the guys, actually. I mean, like, okay. I have a certain preference of women, which is also a little bit rare because I like natural tits, not fake boobs. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't like tat. Like, I hate tattoos and fake tits. Mostly about the guys because I'm. I, I want to identify with this dude if I'm going to be him in this whatever porn. Yeah. And if he's like just covered in like tribal tats and has like a ponytail and a goatee, I'm like, ah. It's like, how can we make this work? Well, okay, well, here's some books on feminism and neuropsychology. And <laughs> you can just read a couple of these, dude, and then, right. then I can try to pretend you're a decent person. Right. Just they, none of them look like normal. They all look like a little off, which, you know, I guess. But then if you see the, like, I don't know if you've seen pornos where like they have not big mainstream porn stars and they are pretty average looking you're like oh come mm. on like i look better than you like right i know like they're they're like even the ant like the amateur ones like would be fine because like, that's when you find more natural looking people mm-hmm. that aren't like the whatever idealized plastic versions of everyone right. but like they are often um less competent like they just fuck w- worse and have grosser body parts What's how do you feel with the new landscape from going from like a LimeWire Napster downloading? Because I remember those days, mm-hmm. and then which were also freaky because I would just click shit and you didn't know what you're gonna get. Oh and yeah, like sometimes you get something where you're like, I don't even know if this is legal. Right, like, I'm like, fuck, like who's you know, uh, like twelve year old Billy possibly broke a law or two by accident. Same, but yeah, <laughs> and everyone did it. If you're in, if you're in the dorms and for your freshman year and you'd say shoot shared that server with whatever word weird pervert had like 2000 videos be careful you want to search teen that's all i'm saying yeah uh but th- th- now the tube sites you know what how do you feel with that difference uh i mean like i like that they're somewhat crowdsourced like there are they can be sorted by popularity and there are key keyword search terms you can use which are help navigating a little bit but i still am yet to find like one that I even like, <laughs> I just put up with site or a video, both, oh, both. Okay, yeah. I mean, like the, <clears throat> you know, it just seems like they're for the treasure trove of video, the content that is out there. It should be easier to find one within my specifications. Like Maybe- you, sh- you should be able, to, like I used to search. Um, cause I used to be a scientist, and I would have to like find um, published journal articles on these like online databases. And I would put in like upwards of five key words. Like I was looking for, you know, uh, addiction study in, in rats and like looking at the amygdala with cocaine and all, all these different, like all these different things that would narrow the search results right. into a specific, like these five authors, mm. which, which was like the article I was looking for. With the porn, like there's, there's like, they just pump, pump. <laughs> Yeah, put up like the same five people that are just on their front page anyway. Right. 
And there's no way to to do that specification because it's just pulling keywords from the title. It's not from the actual content. Of exactly. It. Yeah. They need a better um, like Moneyball version of porn. <laughs> Moneyball version. The advanced statistics. Right. You, like you're like, there's just so many videos. You'd think there'd be one that it's easy to find a good one. It'd be like, well, think about it. There's like, what, 10,000, 100,000 podcasts? That's true. And most of them are real bad. Yeah, that's a good point. I think like even in the, the problem is I'm also probably an atypical porn watcher because mm-hmm. like the, porn is generally <laughs> generated for or like the, the popular porn videos are what people generally like and it's nothing that I like. So like I because I am atypical. So what is it that you're looking for? I want. What's the perfect porno for you? Um, I the perfect porno has a woman with like average to above average size boobs that are natural doesn't have dyed hair just looks like a normal person is not super young not super old necessarily like in 30s or 40s uh a dude like i don't like necessarily threesomes i don't like lesbian porn either just straight up man on woman uh and has like a certain sequence where it's like low job you know missionary reverse cowgirl girl on top doggy style you think i mean like that sounds pretty basic it sounds pretty easy to find you'd think and yet no luck so far if anyone has any ideas if you have links um yeah i did you know don't i don't know if you're supposed to and i don't know if you should spam jano with them but um yeah. <laughs> okay no yeah don't send me any porn links don't Send them to me. I'll take a look. Yeah, I, I don't mind. I don't mind. Just a step by step procedural. It's like go to this site and uh, type in this and that and that. Yeah. All right. Well, you're dating now, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're dating a, a, a lady. Yeah, person? starting to. Okay. So you're getting your your all these jerks must go sale <laughs> a little right? bit, and also because of that, like I before, when I was single, I would probably have sex more days per week because I would have like you know multiple women throughout. Yeah, it's a week like uh, you know. Able was to that go while on. you were uh, doing stand up? Mm-hmm. Did you ever find that that got in the way? No, no, not really. I mean, like, because I, I mean, I wouldn't try to necessarily go on normal like, hey, let's go out to dinner dates. It'd be just like, hey, let's meet up after this show. Okay, grab a drink. Uh, well, why don't you, well, who's the who's the gal? What's what's that story? Um. I mean, too. I don't want to jinx it too early to go into it. You want to jinx it. it? Yeah, we just started. I get. Like, I get that exclusive. I just, my girlfriend. And I just like defined. I just announced uh, like a week or so ago mm-hmm. to these people that you know there's a girlfriend because the, I started the show because I couldn't get a girlfriend because like women would sleep with me oh, but they wouldn't date me and that was it's like a good way to talk it through I guess right so it's like go talk to the exes and find out why. Mm-hmm. But uh, so I wanted to announce to them. And then, you know, like three days after that episode comes out, uh, Paige and I get like drunk and get into like a big fight. And part of me in my head was like, did I jinx it by like saying it on the mm. podcast? Like and bragging like, hey, I got one now. And then like next week I got to say, oh, we broke up. <laughs> so I understand that. You don't got to jinx it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's fine so far. But, but so many like things about our lifestyle specifically mm. are very transient. Like I travel a bunch. Uh, she works really hard on certain things as well. She's in she's a filmmaker. Um, and so like it, at any point, either of us could just be having to go to LA for a job for indefinitely or months at a time, mm-hmm. you know, like I was just like, we were casually dating before, uh, like in the spring or whatever. And then I went on the road for most of the summer. I was gone for six weeks and it was just like, well, see you in a month when and I a get half. Back, yeah. Yeah. And then so like ever since I've been back, we kind of been, you know, gone exclusive or whatever. Do you, do you find uh, dating creatives is better? Like a fellow mm, creative, yes and no. Like you, don't, I don't necessarily want to date someone in my field. I did. I made the exception for Caitlin sure. because uh, she was she's an exceptional lady. Yeah, I'll say that for sure. Um, and but I, I in general, I have not. I've tried to avoid dating comics, and but like this one used to be a comic, so she gets the lifestyle. Like yeah. I don't know. I, it is it is nice to date a creative because it's somewhat of a similar schedule. And they understand it. Like you don't have to justify like, oh, I'm going out. I can't meet up tonight because I'm going out to some like shitty show in, in the Bronx or whatever mm. for five bucks. And they'll also <laughs> get the downtimes. Like they'll understand the depression uh-huh. of like not having a show book for X amount of right. time. Or, yeah. And if you're both not needy people, mm-hmm. it's perfect because you can go for wherever and no one's like, 
if you date someone who doesn't have much going on or if they, they like they do a typical schedule where like they're working in the day but then you're out at night doing right. shows you know and if one of you is needy you know that can go real bad yeah exactly it's like i can't understand why you can't come to this thing with me it's like well because our lives are different yeah and and so like there is that built-in understanding for a creative type for sure mm -hmm. um i wouldn't i mean i wouldn't say it's a deal breaker the other way but you know it helps okay and i think i just am attracted to more creative people like there's a certain i mean not uh, you know yeah because like, I, I identify with it probably i probably have more in common yeah i i mean like i yeah i definitely get attracted more to like witty women and mm -hmm. people who don't need me to like lead the conversation all the time right someone texted me so i got like a, a date for tomorrow night and i told her what how i spent my sunday and it had to do with like they're like podcasts and open mics and shit and then and then like a comedy like hang out socializing so she's like that's like a lot of talking I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So please, like, have things to say so I can talk less. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can't have some passive person who's waiting for you to just drive. Because I've been talking for the last like nine hours, so right. I need to not. Or even worse, like li if you're listening back to like sets or podcasts and you're just hearing yourself. Oh uh, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you can sick your your own voice. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh sick of yours right now oh god damn well, i'm i'll never get sick of you have you have good radio voice oh, you got, uh, it's, it's it's low voice mm -hmm. got that low voice uh i it sometimes can be monotone though and like that's one other thing is like people i could probably lull people off to sleep as well i was always worried about that when i started stand-up because i always thought i had a very monotonous voice mm -hmm. and so i i took a speech and diction class in college just because I want to like be like, is my voice okay? Is it, oh, really? Is it fine? Oh wow! And did it improve? She was like, you're, you're, she's like, yeah, shut the fuck up. You're fine. <laughs> just do your homework. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I definitely like my voice and and cadence and like energy level influenced my comedy style more than like I didn't choose it necessarily. Like I, when when I first started, that was when like uh, Dane Cook was huge. Okay, and everyone was doing Dane Cook at the open mics and stuff like that, and like I probably would have tried it but i just like pr realized pretty early on is like i do not have that energy and to sustain that and fake it it's just not me mm -hmm. so i like did the much more low energy like here's what i think everybody i hope you enjoy it mm. and and like that's kind of influenced the way i communicate on stage well as a dude who's like you know self-proclaimed feminist and knows the things that are going on and the terms and the issues uh, do you ever find because I, I haven't I haven't seen a, a ton of your stand up, but do you ever find that ever conflicts or did you ever um, feel like there was a shift in writing style, uh, being able to like explore certain topics? Oh, certainly. Like when I was because I started like just after college mm -hmm. and like I wasn't as woke back then. I'll admit it. <laughs> yeah, I was I did not get woke until much later. And and like there was certain jokes I had that I I, cause I just I recorded an album last year which is like you know you generally put your greatest hits of whatever amount of years you've had uh, and there was jokes that like I had that probably still worked but just weren't from my point of view anymore mm -hmm. they were a little too slut shamey or whatever just making fun of like women or, or men for like certain more stereotypical behaviors which I kind of wanted to get away from. So like I just kind of I I kind of cut them out of my act because they just didn't ring true to me anymore, and I wouldn't you know, I wouldn't be able to sell them probably as well because I didn't believe in them. Yeah. So like I, my my act has definitely changed, and for hopefully for the better. <laughs> Did you ever um do you ever come up with jokes or ideas where you have to kind of debate like is this like I think this is funny, but maybe it it toes the line of um offensiveness or anything oh, like that. Oh, certainly, yeah. yeah. Like, I'll tell a joke that's a, that's borderline, like, offensive or it, it just straight up is and yeah. it's like, it comes from a, uh, like, a kind of almost like a sarcastically bigoted perspective just for the structure of the joke and then I'll couch it within a joke making fun of it so it puts it in perspective. Sure. Or whatever. Like, I, I had a joke that made fun of women in science or whatever, but then I came back around to say, like, here's why that's ridiculous. Like I, I, did, I used it for the joke because the twist was still there. The joke itself was so structurally sound. I wanted to. Keep You're like, it. well, I, okay, I couldn't tell this joke on its own while being a dirtbag, but it's a good joke. Yeah, yeah. Here's it's a like good when joke. Bill Bursley's like that um, in that special when he quotes the joke on the on the bars like uh, boy. He's like, look, 
that's a great joke. <laughs> There's no fat on it. <laughs> yeah. So maybe if the bar had like uh, couched it in a, in a bigger thing. Exactly. Just like unwoke jokes. And they think you're trying to make a feminist stance. You're like, really? I just wanted to tell this this joke that's right. not very nice. <laughs> but you, you, can, you can have it both ways if you if you do it well enough. Sure, sure. Or even like I, I never throw like I'll write down even the shitty, shitty jokes because like I uh, like there was a there was a stupid joke I had. that was just like a pun it was like whenever, like after sex, um, you know, the common question is like, what side of the bed do you want to sleep on? I'm like, I don't really care. I am ambidextrous. And like, you know, you're, he's staring at me. <laughs> Billy's staring at me very angrily, <laughs> as he should. And the point, like, and like the joke is, it was like, and I love saying they're out of sex because uh, <laughs> it's too late. You can't unhave sex with me. It's like, it's like a way yeah. of like twisting that horrible joke into a punishment for having sex with me is now you have to put up with my shitty puns. Right. So like couched within that horrible uh, or with with a, with a much more better perspective is that that shitty, shitty pun. What's your stance on doing jokes about people you're dating at the time you're dating them? Including like tweets, posts and stuff, but like especially like on stage. Well, <laughs> the, the creative types that I've, I have dated, mm-hmm. like which are the last two people I have, I don't have to explain anything because they get it. They understand Twitter. They know, yeah. they know that it isn't always like literally reality. Or it's not necessarily them. It's like it's just the idea of a, mm-hmm. a girlfriend. Oh, sure, sure. There's or a girlfriend th- character that's merged between several of people I've dated. Yeah, it's it's easier than saying, well, there's this girl and this girl and this girl. It's like, well, no, this is just all a girlfriend. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the proverbial girlfriend. Right. Uh, the royal guy, whatever. Uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, well, Caitlin was cool about it because she, I think she just loved the attention. Is show, <laughs> she's so unashamed of everything she does. Sure. Uh, she has a show called Contagious. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, and it's describing her. So, uh, she, she, I never had to like, I, I would run jokes by her just as like, hey, this is funny, right? Not like I can do this, right? She was like, would have, she would have been fine with me saying the horrible things about her, which I never really did. But, uh, and then, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't really have that many like, oh, this ex-girlfriend of mine. What a bitch. Like, there's no jokes I have like that. I get along with all my exes. You do? Yeah. Maybe you could do a podcast with them. That's <laughs> Anytime I tell people what the premise is, they're like, they, they're willing to do it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I was in a dirtbag to most of them. So. Yeah. No, it's amazing how how like you can get along with people and, and have a, good, not a stress-free life, I want to say, when you treat people well. Yeah. I, I I've never had an ex try to get like involved with you know I've never had ex drama carrying other relationships or people contact no you neither no yeah just treat treat your people nicely uh, mm-hmm. breakups can be ugly but it doesn't mean you have to fucking drop an atom bomb on them it's uh, right yeah yeah that's so I'm glad we agree on that yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> um but Jono thank you so much you were uh, fantastic do you uh, want to play you said you have an album that you put out last year oh yeah it's called the uh, snake oil you can you can just google my name as well and you'll find it pretty easily I have a website I have twitter I'm at John Ozelay mm-hmm. on all forms of social media uh, I also have a podcast as well it's gonna we're on hiatus we're between seasons right now but it's this one will come out probably sometime in the mid fall it's called universe city and it's a science comedy podcast. And we, you know, because I'm a former scientist, yeah. I do it with another former scientist <laughs> and our friend Joe Zimmerman. And we love science and talking about it and doing sciencey things. Awesome. Um, is the album on Spotify as well? Yeah, it's on, it's on everything. Cool. Just because I know uh, I know we got a lot of people who listen on to this on Spotify. So if that makes it easier for them, go check that out. Totally. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for sharing. And uh, good talking to you, dude. Of course. Feel free to say that. bye to people. Bye, everybody. Later. Get his comedy album, Snake Oil, on iTunes, okay? Very funny guy. Again, and you can also find his podcast, Universe City. Uh, Oh, I, fuck. I get it now. Because Universe City is also saying university, like uni. Oh, that's fucking clever. I just got that. <laughs> uh, and check him out all over the interwebs. That's John Ozale, J-O-N-O-Z-A-L-A-Y. You can find us both on Twitter. I'm at the Billy Persita. Say hello. Use the hashtag Podcast. Let me know what you thought about the show. I got this one from at Miss Monsanto. 
If you are wondering about my behavior lately, let me send you to God of All Gods, Billy Presida. His podcast makes me forget I am Catholic. Well, uh, that hyperbole is so unnecessary, but very much appreciated. Thank you, Shadira. If you want to say something uh, privately, a little longer, send your comments, your questions, your booby pictures over to manwhorepod at gmail.com. You can also like the Manwhore Podcast on Facebook. You can find me on there at the Billy Presida. Be a part of the conversation with your fellow fan whores on the Man Whore Podcast subreddit. There are individual comment th- threads for every episode. Uh, I also post pictures there. I ask questions. I share articles that I'm quoted in. You're also welcome to post uh, anything you want regarding the show and sex and butt stuff there. For all you Reddit people, that's r slash Man Whore Podcast. Last but not least, if you can spare, whether a dollar a month, five dollars, ten dollars, or even just a uh, a sexually suggestive symbolic sixty nine cents per month, please make a pledge to me and the Man Whore Podcast on Patreon. One of the prouder things I can say about this podcast is that is uh, it's not funded primarily through advertisements merchandise and live appearances although i would love all those all those things i am most proud that this show is funded by the listeners i think that means uh more than anything so please head on over to patreon.com slash man podcast that's patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash man podcast Hope you enjoyed, Jono. Uh, I know I did. Next week's episode is, a, is another throwback from my Los Angeles trip. Another porn-related one. Uh, it's a very niche porn, we'll say. What kind of niche porn? Well, um, have you ever heard of cake farts? See you next week. Stay slutty. <laughs>